Hey folks, Ray at DCGarmerica.com here to give you a full review and 11 new things about the Garmin 4Runner 245 here on my wrist. At the same time, Garmin also announced today the 4Runner 945, the higher-end multi-sport triathlon watch on the other wrist, and the 4Runner 45, the less expensive kind of budget-focused running watch that's sitting on the ground right there. I've got all the videos up here in the corner and whatnot if you want to check those out, or my full in-it reviews that's on the screen right now that's like a gazillion pages long and photos and more detail than I could possibly ever cover right here here. Um, so this video is about the 245 in particular, starting off with 11 new things about it. Though realistically, like for every one of those things, you're going to find it like three things. So I could have called this like 33 things that are new, but I'm just going to save you that pain and suffering. Um, also keep in mind, this is not a sponsored video in any way, shape or form. This product is a standard media PR loaner. Uh, it goes back to Garmin as soon as I'm done with it. And that's that. Oh, and then after the 11 new things, I'm actually just going to pull up the watch. We're just going to walk through some of the user interface, some of the basics on it. With that, let's jump right into number one, which is the fact that it now has music on it, or at least one version of it does. Uh, so if you've got a pair of Bluetooth headphones, any sort of Bluetooth headphones will work, some better than others. Garmin has a whole compatibility list on that. But there are two versions of the 245. One called the 245, one called the 245 Music. Uh, one is 299, the one with that music, and one is 349, the one with music. Uh, on that, you have the ability to store whatever music you want, so about 3.5 gigs of usable space on that watch to store music. At the same time, you can also put streaming services on there as well, so Spotify, Deezer, iHeartRadio, I think a few other you've never heard of in your life before. Uh, the big one, of course, being Spotify, and that's what I've got loaded on my uh, wrist right now. And so I've gone ahead and I downloaded certain playlist uh, songs that I want, so you can download playlist, dynamic ones even they'll go ahead and auto update every single time you click the update button in the Spotify app uh, and then you can listen to it on your headphones for me music's working working out pretty well uh, it's almost not almost it is exactly the same it is on the Phoenix 5 plus the same as it is on the 4Runner 645 music headphone wise no dropouts whatsoever with these older beats headphones are like three four five like a decade old uh, they're really old number two on the list is support for running dynamics uh, so if you have the RD pod this little the yellow thing right here or if you have the HRM run or a from try heart rate straps you can get running dynamics information into your run that includes things like ground contact time and vertical oscillation uh, basically metrics that tell you about your running efficiency and running form it's something Garmin's had around the block for a number of years but this is the lowest price point we've ever seen these metrics at which kind of gets to the entire theme of the 400 uh, 245 you're basically taking things that used to be on more expensive watches and just lowering the price bracket to the 245 it's honestly as simple as that there's virtually nothing on this watch that is brand new in terms of Garmin speak it's just simply going from you know $100 more expensive now to these new price points speaking of potentially uh, questionable metrics is pulse ox now pulse ox by itself isn't questionable in fact it's used in a lot of different scenarios primarily in high altitude uh, climbing and in hospitals uh, but in the case of outdoors it's high altitude climbing to go ahead and measure your pulse oxygenation levels uh, and it was introduced last year on the Garmin Phoenix 5X Plus, and then we've seen it come to a variety of units over the last year. The only downside is I'm not sure it's super accurate. And the reason is that from like an FDA certification standpoint, that test is typically done in a very still environment. Uh, so you're sitting at a desk, you take the reading, very, very still. Versus right now, I'm moving around, I'm talking, I could be out walking somewhere, I could be catching the bus, all that kind of stuff. And the quality of the accuracy seems to go down lower than I would hope. Oh, and quick thing, if you're finding this interesting or useful or whatever, just go and whack that like button at the bottom there. It really helps out the channel quite a bit. Next on the list is Ultra. Ultra track. Uh, previously, Ultra Tracks were always reserved for Garmin's higher end watches, the really expensive stuff. Uh, and what that does is it slightly reduces the GPS uh, sampling and recording rates to go ahead and give you longer battery, significantly longer battery. Uh, so, in the case of the 4Runner 245, you're getting 24 hours of battery life in GPS mode. Now, I would not recommend this for your average 5K and certainly not here on the track because it's going to skip too many data points. Um, but what's great for is if you're hiking somewhere, uh, in that particular case, it's not going to matter a whole lot because those track points are much closer together. Next on the list is one of the reasons why they can get that 24 hour uh, GPS point with UltraTrack and that is a new GPS chipset. Uh, so the 4Runner245, like the 4Runner945, like the 4Runner45, like the Mark series, like the Edge 830, Edge 530, and everything else Garmin has released in 2019 comes with a new Sony GPS chipset. Uh, in fact, it's the same GPS chipset both Polar and Sunto, uh, as well as Coros, put in the products over the past year. 
generally not without a lot of success, to be honest. Uh, now, in my experience so far the last month or so with all these watches, having a Polar Vantage series directly next to these watches and every single time, these watches, the new Garmin watches, are producing more accurate GPS tracks than the Polar watch. Uh, now, why is that if they're using the same exact GPS chipset? because most people focus too much on the chipset and not enough on the antenna. Uh, antenna design on watches and any device is probably the most important thing out there. And if you get it wrong, it's it's bad. And so overall, I'm not super concerned about the Sony chipset. It's not as good as before, I'll tell you that straight up, uh, but it's also not horrible either. So it is what it is. Oh, and then on top of that, you can go ahead and now pair Bluetooth smart sensors as well to the watch. Had nothing to do with GPS, but I just stuck in this bullet because it just sort of fits. Next, Garmin has brought down trending load from the higher end watches into the 400 245. Uh, and so what that allows you to see is your overall trending load, um, kind of like from an optimal standpoint. So you can look at that and see how much load is accumulated over a given time period, and then judge whether or not it makes sense to adjust your workouts to that. Uh, and that gets a little bit of the difference between something like the 245 and the 945. The 945 gives you more details on that uh, and it gives you kind of better focus on what to do next and they simply call that training focus. Uh, and so there is, that's kind of where you see that differentiation happen where they, yes, they brought down features from the higher end into the slower end watch, but in doing that, they introduced new features in the higher end watch that you might want instead. Next, VO2 max estimates now account for heat. Uh, now this may sound kind of silly, but in the past there was no accounting for heat. Your VO2 max uh, test what it was. Even if you went out on a crazy hot sweltering day, uh, heat humidity through the roof, it didn't account for that, uh, which in turn impacted things like race predictors and all that kind of stuff. So VO2 max wasn't just a simple number that you saw on the watch, it's used for a lot of things within the watch itself. Uh, and so having that be correct when you're in higher temperature environments is actually pretty important. It sounds silly, but it's one of those things that impacts that. Which gets into the next one, which is an improved race predictor. In the past, what happened is they took that VO2 max number uh, and they fed it into standard issue charts, which basically said that you took your gender, uh, your age and then your VO2 max number and then you could produce this race predictor time. So if you could do really well on the track here, you can kind of fake it into producing a really good marathon number, even though you didn't have the base miles to do that marathon. So now they've done, they actually look at your base mileage and they look at that and say, nope, you don't have the mileage to pull off a marathon. So for most people, this means that your race predictor times will decrease as in they get slower. Next is increased customization of the data pages and data fields. Uh, in the past, you were always limited to basically three data fields per page on most of Garmin's kind of lower end watches. Now at the 245, you can do four data fields per page, effectively matching what you've had at all of Garmin's higher end watches in the past. Uh, so just greater customization of that stuff. It pretty much matches what you have on the 41 or 645 from like a data standpoint and a customization standpoint. Next, there's now swimming support in the 245, uh, which makes sense because Garmin introduced it in the Vivo Active 3, I don't know, like almost two years ago now. Uh, and that was always weird to have it like in cheaper watches, but not the more expensive watches. So we're seeing a little bit of leveling that out. Uh, so you can go and swim with it, not just from like a water protection standpoint, but actually a lap tracking perspective. Uh, so not outdoor swims, but just indoor swims. Uh, and you can go ahead and do that. It'll give you laps and lengths and all that kind of fun stuff. Okay, last but not least, before we get into kind of the using the watch straight up, is two new features in one, all under the safety umbrella. Um, so there's instant detection and safety assistance. Uh, so what instant detection does, it goes ahead and if you crash your bike um, or you crash on the track, or something, you basically collapse on the track while in the middle of a workout, it'll go ahead and notify people. Uh, and what it does is you have a predefined emergency contact list and they will receive a text message with the location of the incident and then a live track link from that point forward. Uh, the point behind that being that if you go ahead and then collapse here, you can see the incident that happened here or your friends and family can see that. And then they can see ideally the fact that you're no longer here, maybe you're in an ambulance going to the hospital and they can follow you and find out where you are. Um, you have a, a period of time to cancel that if something happens. Uh, and the way it roughly works is that they're looking for a high G impact event followed by nothing. Um, so in other words, if you were to go ahead and trip and then get back up again and keep on going, you'd be fine because you're still moving forward. You're still making forward progress. But if you were to go ahead and trip face plant and then like basically next to nothing, no forward progress anymore, that's when it's going to trigger it. And then on the watch itself, you can go and cancel that event uh, if it's a false positive. The next feature that's very similar that is the assistance feature. And what that allows you to do is to hold down a button to trigger basically a safety alert to your friends and family that something is up. Uh, so that could be if you feel uncomfortable in a situation and you want to go ahead and tell your emergency contacts that you might need help. It does the exact same thing as the instant detection does where it goes ahead and it gives your current location and then a live track link from there on out. It also has a 
pre-canned message that you can specify ahead of time. So that goes out to your friends and family that says, hey, I think someone creepy is following me. Go ahead and uh, keep a watch on me for now. Now with both of these features, you need to have your phone on you or within range of you. So with that, let me just give you a quick run through of the watch itself, kind of the user interface, how it works. Here we are on the main watch face. Now this of course is fully customizable. I can do that just by simply pressing the uh, watch face button there through the menus and going ahead and customizing or changing it to, to whatever I want. And each one of the data metrics on it is also fully customizable as well. Further, you can use the Garmin Connect IQ app to go ahead and add your own watch faces, even add your dog as a picture of the background, kind of whatever you want there is the world's your oyster. Uh, back to the main page though, I can go up and down through the widgets. So you can see as I do this, I can see my trending status widget. Uh, crack that open real quick right there. Uh, you'll see yesterday's workout triggered a VO2 max of 53. I can go down, I can see the trending load that we talked about earlier. Uh, the, op, the green is the optimal, the blue is a bit low, the red's a bit high. Recover from yesterday's workout, but 18 hours till my next hard workout, it's what it's recommending. So back on more widgets, uh, the heart rate, stress, and body battery widgets. Uh, now in this case, it's not gonna find my heart rate because it's on a metal pole, um, but it'll show me my heart rate right there, and this is the heart rate over the last four hours. Uh, and the same goes for stress, again, on a metal pole, so it's not gonna find my current stress level. Um, it's counting down there at the number of seconds it needs. And then here is my body battery. So the last four hours, I was at 91% uh, about four hours ago, so a little after I woke up, and then down to 56%. So it thinks I'm fairly stressed today, which I'm kind of going through this a little bit faster than I would normally go through it. Back here to the main widget page, uh, this is my day. So, uh, so far at 2,300 steps, uh, about 1,300 uh, calories. SpO2, again, it's not my wrist right now, but instead I'll show you a screen right now of what it looks like when it is on my wrist. Going down through here, we got smartphone notifications, followed by the weather, uh, followed by uh, my calendar. And this is also mixing in workouts that's automatically coming from the Garmin training plans that are on my calendar. And then back to music. So this is a Spotify music controls. If I go ahead and press this, um, I have no idea what it was listening to, but that's that. Then we got history for the last 30 days, uh, followed up by the current, my latest run this case, last night's run. So now that I'm back on the main page here, I can press the start button right there to go in and start a run. Uh, so you can see it's gonna go ahead and find GPS. This thing will go across the top like that uh, once it's found GPS. And I can also change the sport down the bottom here. So I can go to treadmill, indoor track, bike, etc. I can add other sports right there. You can see uh, a bunch of sports that you can add and customize, other being kind of the catch-all bucket. Uh, we're gonna go back here though to run. So there we go. Uh, I can also go ahead and customize my run settings by holding this left button right there. So hold this down, run settings and in data screens, for example, you can see some of these screens right there. These are some default ones mostly. These are the uh, Garmin run dynamic screens that you see right there. Keep on going down. This is one of the new four data field ones that I created myself. So I put lap time, lap distance, lap pace, and my current heart rate. I don't really want lap heart rate. It's too laggy uh, in my opinion. And then I can go ahead and see the map. Again, there's no like actual map behind it. It's just where you've been. And then I go down, I can add a virtual partner page or the music control page as well if I want to. Going back to some of the run settings, I can configure alerts in here. So I can add alerts based on heart rate, run, walk, pace, time, distance, cadence, calories, uh, and so on. All this stuff is very, very similar to the past, auto lap. Um, also on auto lap here, you now have lap alerts. So configurable lap banner is on this watch as well. So it's kind of nice to see that fully down at this price point, uh, auto pause, auto scroll, GPS. Here's why I can go into Galileo mode, part of the new Sony chipset uh, that was added here. And then here is the ultra track as well if I wanted to change that into that mode. Again, do not use that for short things, only use that if you're really planning on going beyond kind of the, the basics of the battery life um, of itself. Back into run, you see it's found GPS by now, of course, uh, and then it's still blinking for my heart rate because it's not there. And if I were to go ahead and shake that RD pod that's somewhere behind me, then I would see uh, the running dynamics pod show up as well. And this should pop up, there we go, RD pod is now connected uh, for running dynamics. Again, that can also come from the HRM run or HRM try straps as well. At this point, I would simply press the start button and I'm good to go. Uh, you'll see this information just like you would in the past Garmin watches. You can go change this, the data fields by pressing the down button right there iterate all through these and complete your workout. And then from here, it syncs it up to Garmin Connect uh, where I can see it on Garmin Connect Mobile. Here's a workout I did just a couple of days ago uh, around town. So you can see my GPS track there uh, and you can see some of the metrics on that as well. Okay, there you go, your complete look at the Garmin 4Runner 245 and 245 Music. Uh, again, if you want way more details on this, check out the full end of the review in the link in the description thingy there. Um, also, if you found this interesting, hit the like button and the subscribe button, all the buttons you know what to do there. Uh, and don't forget about the 400 945 and 45 videos that are up on the corner of the screen right about now. Have a good one.